Now let's extend the TSP to vehicle routing problem, or its abbreviation is VRP. So VRP is extension of TSP, where there are multiple tours. Previously for TSP, we have several cities. You want to start from one city and then go through all the cities and then return. For VRP, actually, we have a central depot and then there are still a lot of things, a lot of locations we want to visit, but we cannot finish all the visits in one tour, for example, because of the capacity. If you want to deliver something to all the customers, but your truck has certain limited capacity, then in one tour, you cannot finish. That indicates you have to use multiple tours. For example, you can go this way, and there was another truck, go this way, and then another truck, go this way. For this group of customers and the depot, it's a TSP problem. You need to start from the depot and then go back to the depot and then visit all the cities. So similarly, for all the tours, it's TSP. That's why the VRP problem is extension for TSP. So similarly, we can use mixed integer programming to formulate the problem. Let's see, still we have n customers indexed from 1 to until n. Beside these customers, we have one depot. Then we give this depot index 0. So similarly, we have the distance for any location to another location, cij, or we call it cost from i to j. Aj belongs to 0, 1, and given m trucks. Here, because we want to satisfy the customer demand, let's see the demand at each customer is di. And definitely, we have a capacity constraint of the truck. Otherwise, there's no need to solve a multiple tour VRP problem. OK, these are our parameters. So our decisions are still denoted by xij. So if xij is 1, then there is a trip from i to j. If 0, then we do not travel from i to j. So here, we cannot simply use uh, the sequence in the tour yi to eliminate the subtour because there are multiple tours, so we will introduce another set of constraints to eliminate the subtours. Let's see how we give all these constraints. So similarly to the TSP, we have the conservation law. So for any customer, one truck will visit the customer and one truck will leave the customer. But for the depot, it's different. We can have exactly M trucks go out from the depot and then go back. So for depot, we can have total outflow equals to total inflow equals to m. So this is indicating that we have m trucks go out from the depot and then go back. So for a normal customer, we have inflow and outflow out one. This is for i from one to n. Let's see the subtour emanation. So here we introduce a method which use a lot of constraints. So the critical idea for this subtour elimination is in this way. So if we have a group of customers in it, so we can estimate the total number of trucks needed. So for this group of customer, let's see, this is a S. And then all the demand would be sum of s, demand at s. And then each truck capacity is v. So we can have the number of trucks needed. We take the ceiling function, we call our one-to-one -one system. So this is the number of truck needed. And then the truck must be dispatched from the depot. So the, the depot is not in this uh, group of customers. So there must be, let's see if this is uh, m. So this must be m trucks in and then m trucks out. So we can pick up any either the inflow or the outflow to write the constraint. For example, we pick the 
outflow to rest the constraint. So that means for any customer in this set, we want to find out the flow outside this, this group of customers. So here indicates the outflow from this uh, group of customers S, starting from a customer in this group and then go outside to J, which is outside this group. This is a uh, outflow. So number of trucks outside this group has to be greater or equal to the number of trucks needed. So this is for all possible group of customers. So for example, if we have, this is a D part, and then this is a customer one, customer two, and the demand for customer one, let's say is a one, demand for customer two is also one, and then the capacity is also one. So this indicates that we can send a truck to one and then go back, and then send another truck to two and then go back. So if we have a subtour within like a one to two and then do not go back to D part, then there is a subtour. So from the constraint we just mentioned, we can pick up all the possible group of customers. Let's see, we have two customers. So all possible group of customers would be one, two, one, two. So for customer one, we have lost as a constraint. Let's see if S is one, locations outside this group should be two and then the D part. So if we write this uh, XIJ summation of all the outflow from one and then to zero. So actually this is X one, two plus X one, zero. This must be greater or equal to the total demand in this group is one and the capacity is one. So must be greater or equal to one. And then similarly, if S equals to two and then the location outside s is one and zero we can have x two one plus x two zero greater than equal to one and then if s is one two the nodes outside would be zero so we can have this would be x one zero plus x two zero greater or equal to the d one plus d two divided by v this is two Okay, so with this uh, subtour elimination constraint, we can formulate the VRP problem. Similarly, we want to minimize our total cost or distance, the same as our TSP. Okay, so the conservation law will be one if this is a customer, and then, then the D part, we guarantee it has M trucks, and then we have our subtour elimination. So any flow from a group S, outside has to be greater or equal to the number of trucks needed. This is for any subset of customers. So that means we have two to the power of n minus one possible subset, which is a, a lot of constraint. And definitely here we have xij is integer.